Well, the Daily Telegraph has conducted a special investigation into how many red centre locals know about the voice to parliament. And despite living in the birthplace of this referendum, many Uluru locals say they don't know what the vote is all about or have any knowledge of the proposed voice to parliament. In fact, the telly reporter discovered uh, the sentiment in a number of local towns was not opposition or support, but actually apathy. Joining me now is Liberal National MP for Groom, Garth Hamilton. Welcome to the show, Garth. And um, it seems at every turn now, the Yes campaign is just failing to get their message across, whether it be to Indigenous people who this is supposedly meant to benefit but don't actually know what it is, or the rest of the population who keep getting beaten over the head by people like Marsha Langton uh, being told they're racist and stupid. Well, doesn't that just to speak to the absolute failure of the Prime Minister to get his voice proposal across the line? One of the things he's done all the way through, Caleb, is hide behind this idea that this is coming from Aboriginal Australia. But what we're going to be voting on in this referendum is wording from the Prime Minister as to a change to the Constitution. Now, at every step of the way, he's failed to get people behind him. And I think the reason is you can't expect people to follow you if you're not willing to be a leader. Hmm. And we've seen when, when it's got hot, when it's got hard for him and the polls have turned uh, and now he's facing a real uphill battle, he's completely gone to custard. This is not a Prime Minister who has the strength to lead Australia through difficult times. He won't even lead Australia through this very difficult and divisive referendum that he's fought on us. Yeah, I think there was a poll uh, either last week or, or during the week from The Guardian of all places that, that showed even amongst Indigenous Australians the, the yes vote is severely falling. I mean, if you can't convince the people for whom this is meant to be beneficial that it is actually going to work for them, how do they think anyone else is going to buy it? Well, I think there's, there's a really interesting story that's going to come through here, Caleb, as we see this referendum go through. If you want to see a great story of Aboriginal Australians being included fulsomely uh, in our national story and narrative, think about this. Australia's democracy right now is being saved by an Aboriginal woman. And I can't think of any greater example of our inclusion, of our openness, mm -hmm. social mobility and our equality than, than the amount of people across Australia, no matter what their background, race, religion, who are listening to Jacinta and saying, there's someone that I can follow. And they're completely ignoring the colour of her skin, where she's from, how much mm -hmm. money's in her parents' pockets, whatever it would have divided us before. We're simply seeing someone with great character, great qualities, and we're willing to acknowledge that. Hear, hear. Now, of course, the Labor government uh, announced their COVID inquiry this week, or inquiry, quote-unquote, because, of course... We know it's not going to look into the states. Daniel Andrews was asked about it today and basically said, oh, well, you know, it's not the job of the feds to be looking into the states. But uh, no one else is going to look into the states. We can't expect Daniel Andrews to wake up tomorrow morning and look into himself, can we? Well, look, anyone hoping to find courage in our Prime Minister is going to be sadly disappointed. We just talked about that he won't stand up and lead on his own voice issue. He certainly won't stand up to the premiers. He wouldn't stand up to the unions. Um, when it comes to the IR legislation. He won't stand up to big tech on his misinformation bill. Uh, consider that and compare that to Bob Hawke. You know, you know, look, I'm not his hugest supporter, but I'll acknowledge he at least stood up and had a fight for Australians. He mm. put Australians' interests first. This is a case of a Prime Minister who's putting the Labor Party's interests first. He's looking after his Labor Premier mates at a time when we have an opportunity to really look through what happened. And there's a lot of things we got right. There's a lot of things we got wrong. There's a lot of things we can improve on. And I think it's, it's going to be a waste of time if we miss this opportunity. And it's all because the Prime Minister doesn't have the guts to do what needs to be done. Well, it's worse than a waste of time. I mean, you know, we were basically promised as good as a royal commission before the last federal election, um, and nothing less is due. I mean, for heaven's sake, they had a royal commission into robo-debt. So things like robo-debt are deemed bad enough for there to be a royal commission, and, of course, things like the aged care sector got a royal commission. Surely one of the biggest events that caused upheaval in the world, and particularly this country, in the last 100 years deserves one as well. Garth Hamilton, thank you for joining me tonight.